Welcome to our No Step Home Building Series. This video is going to show you from start to finish how to install your load bearing wall there in the center of your house. To get that chalk line, just pull off your corner, outside corner of your concrete, mark it on your wall, fudge it this way a little bit for our HVAC guy. Now you're going to see that we have our other load bearing exterior studs up. It's kind of special for the snow step house. If you want to see those, um, check out the link that I have below or at the end. After you get that chalk line in, we're going to start installing our green plate. I'll show here while we do this here in a second. If you haven't seen our other videos on how to get to this point, you can see our other walls are finished. Check out the playlist that is going to be connected to the series. Um, I'll have other videos of what we did before, which was us just leveling those walls. And also what we're going to do next after this load bearing wall is up, which I believe is joists, but there might be a step before that. Just have to check it out. Okay, so I just checked it out. The video that you'll be seeing next is how to do your joist layout. The way that we set up our framing with our studs before, make it so that our joist will literally lay out on top of those. If you need to see that from before, you can check out us installing our bearing walls. I'll leave a link right here for that. All right, but back to this video though. We right now are putting in a stud here. Well, my father is, he's putting in a stud right here. You're gonna see that he's gonna put another stud in. This is kind of splitting up the wall so that we can level these and get a chalk line. These studs will hold the chalk line up as we get ready to mark every That's single right stud. Here, so it's so all these you can see right here now that we're leveling them. and he's gonna end up cutting them right into place. Make sure that these are exact and critical. You're gonna have one on each end and then two somewhere kinda in the middle. I'm gonna put on a block on each side so that we can make sure that our side ones are level and so that they can be connected to those walls on the outside that we've already had leveled up. He's gonna cut those ones into place, the two center ones. Now you could mark it, cut it, and then nail them in. Or if you know how to use a skill saw, you can do it this way. I'm gonna put the two end boards in. I put those two nails behind to make sure that my board doesn't push past to that other green plate. We want it flush with the plate that we're on right here because it's critical to have that board level. You can screw it, nail it, it really doesn't matter. Okay, it will be hot today. Okay. Now we're going to make that perfectly level. Hop over to the other side and make it perfectly level. Sweet. 
Now we are going to be putting up a chalk line. Person you're trying to reach is not available. At the time. Notice that all my nails are about a half inch away from the edge. And there's a reason for that. Okay, we're going to put in our nails to hold our string on. Okay, now I'm gonna get my nails in on this side so I can twist my chalk line string on there. Pull it nice and tight, but you don't wanna break your chalk line, so not too tight. All I do is just twist around those two nails, it'll hold just fine. Okay, so remember how I said a half inch on your board. So on your green plate, you'll notice that when I put that board on there, it'll be about a half inch down at the bottom away from that edge. There it is. So that my board will be sitting flat on the green plate when I get my chalk line on. And then I'll square that off. Make sure all your boards are sitting flat and they're all being held level. So I'm going to mark these with the chalk line, then I'm going to square them, and you can see my dad following me cutting each and every single one of them. Okay, and now I'm going to use eight penny rim shank nails. I'm going to put in four to five nails in each, three on one side, two on the other. This top plate doesn't have any markings on it. So far, we're literally just gonna shoot this endo in and it's gonna land wherever it lands. I'm gonna pull that nail out. Leveling that stud to pull off for layout. Okay, they'll all be on this side now. Okay. You'll know. Yeah. So he's going to go ahead and mark every 16 inches as far as he can reach. And then do it again. We'll level up our next time that we have to pull through. Because this tape won't reach all the way. So... Either way, we're gonna get all these top plate on. You're gonna notice our top plates don't land directly on studs. For these pony walls, it doesn't really matter because we're gonna put on a second top plate that'll straighten all those ones out. So they don't have to have a full connection on those endos. You can see right there, he leveled again so he could pull through. How close do you get to these? Four foot. No more than four, no closer. No less than four foot. Okay. No less than four foot. Okay, so now I'm going to level this bearing wall perfectly. Um, if this was a typical house, we would just level it as we put on our joists. But it seems how we're doing this whole house a little bit different by dropping the floor of, well, dropping the joists down into the floor so it can be a no-step home. We're going to make sure that we dot all our I's and cross all our T's and make sure that everything's done exactly the way it needs to be for this to be 
a success. checking out this video of us putting up our load bearing wall for these joists if you haven't seen what we've done and you're just joining us jump to the playlist I'll have it linked here or if you're ready for the next step we're gonna start marking out and doing our layout for our joists and we'll just keep moving on with this no step house build